Hello everyone, my name is Mauricio Martinez and today we'll talk about existentialism. We'll have a look into this uh, literary and philosophical movement. First, we'll have a brief look into its history. Later, we'll be working on its major themes or concerns. And finally, we'll be uh, addressing existentialism as a literary movement and to see uh, some of its authors. To start talking about the history of existentialism, it's not an easy thing to do because there is no a milestone or a starting point. So in that case, we are going to talk about its founding fathers. In the 19th century Europe, uh, the world was ruled by mathematics, science and religion. Those systems um, attempted to explain in an all-encompassing way how uh, the world functioned. They provided um, universal truths so that people uh, knew how to understand and interpret their lives. The Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, he took distance from those systems. Mm -hmm. He was uh, considered uh, the father of existentialism mm -hmm. and he explored during his life the concept of subjectivity. He believed that the self mm, and self-reflection was really important in order to find uh, the truths of life. Mm -hmm. We also have um, the German philosopher uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. His uh, work critiqued the uh, objective truths of uh, morality and uh, the rules of life. Mm. He, um, in his work, he approached those topics and he became uh, very uh, controversial. Uh, the Russian author, uh, Pyotr Dostoevsky, he also explored some of these existential uh, topics, uh, for example, uh, poverty, morality, and the human condition. He was well known as one of the first writers to explore such topics. The movement became more prominent during the 20th century. Mm -hmm. There were many historical events, um, for example, the invention of uh, automobiles and telephones, mm -hmm. uh, many technological uh, inventions that changed the way in which people communicated and interacted. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. factories increased in number and in size, and uh, also the devastation produced by World War II. So, individuals were really um, uh, questioning mm, uh, many traditional values and ideas. And um, some authors and philosophers started to find in this scenario, mm, um, many, um, they started to find uh, the many influences and they start to find an inspiration on such events in order to uh, start writing about these topics. Mm -hmm. Some of the, those authors are uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, Albert Camus, Franz Kafka, T.S. Eliot and Hermann Hess. Now that we have an idea of the context of existentialism, let's have a look at some of its major themes or concerns. Mm -hmm. um, first, we have the existential attitude, which is an individual starting asking questions. Mm -hmm. Deep philosophical questions such as, why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? And what does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. So those uh, questions um, emerge as one of the key topics or themes. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing the, these writers had in common is that they rejected all those systems that provide uh, definite and complete answers about human life. Mm -hmm. um, many pre-Socratic 
uh, philosophers, they devoted their lives to, um, to create and to develop those systems that uh, gave answers to all the questions of um, human life. However, um, existentialist writers, they believed that by following those systems, they uh, couldn't exercise the freedom of thought. So this was actually detrimental to their uh, development. Another key idea is uh, one developed by um, Jean Paul Sartre, and it is that existence precedes essence. Hmm? So what does it mean? What does uh, this essence refer to? Well, um, in order to understand that, we need to go back to ancient Greece and um, to listen to the ideas of Aristotle. Aristotle believed that every object and being had an essence, hmm? a rock, a chair, or an apple. Hmm? So basically, um, the idea is that um, every object has unique features, characteristics that makes it what it is. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, a chair. Let's think about a chair. So uh, the function or the nature of a chair is to uh, allow a person to accommodate while it's um, resting. So the first person who ever built a chair had this idea in mind and when uh, he was building it, he assigned this uh, function. Mm -hmm. So in that particular case, um, the essence precedes its existence. Mm -hmm. So for Aristotle, uh, even humans had this particular essence. Uh, the philosophical uh, author, Jean Paul Sartre, he, on the other hand, believed that uh, for humans is the other way around. Existence precedes essence. Hmm? Uh, we were not assigned a particular um, essence when we were designed. So basically, it is up to us um, to compromise, to develop an essential truth and to assign meaning to our lives. Hmm? This uh, concept is explored in many of uh, his writings. In existentialist uh, literature, we often find common individuals who face uh, their different um, dilemmas in life. Mm -hmm. We find how they deal with um, human conditions from their very particular perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, one example of this is found in the starting line of the novel uh, Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Mm -hmm. Here um, I will read this starting line. One morning, as Gregor Samsa was waking up from anxious dreams, he discovered that in bed he had been changed into a monstrous buck. So this is a very powerful image as each one of us at one point in our lives have felt in such a way. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest um, um, strengths of this um, literary movement. Mm -hmm. And we later in the novel discover what happened to Gregor and how his story develops. Mm -hmm. um, during the 20th century, uh, existentialism became um, well known uh, worldwide as a cultural and also as a literary movement, especially because some of uh, these authors, mm -hmm. here I'm going to talk about uh, Jean Paul Sartre. He uh, developed many of his ideas in the book Nausea. Mm -hmm. He also wrote a collection of short stories called The Wall. And um, at the end, his major work on this uh, literary movement that was 
being and nothingness. We also have uh, Albert Camus, he was also French, well he was uh, born in Algeria but then he moved. Um, he uh, explored these ideas on books such as The Stranger, mm. he also wrote um, philosophical essays such as The Myth of Sisyphus and um, he also wrote uh, journalism for um, newspaper combat. Um, we also have some uh, authors of different nationalities in which we can um, also highlight Franz Kafka who, that we were talking uh, before. As a conclusion, I would like to say that many people have criticized the movement historically by saying that this is a contemplative philosophy, that by exploring such ideas of fear and anxiety hmm, uh, that will incite people to inactivity and to apathy. However, I think it's the other way around. I think that by embracing our humanity, uh, we can become more responsible towards our own life. Mm? We can exercise our freedom of thought, um, our liberty, and at the end to dignify our life. Mm? So to finish, I would like to uh, quote Albert Camus, which is uh, a more positive and optimistic idea hmm, from this um, from this thought and it is in the midst of winter I found there was within me an invisible summer hmm? so I think this summarizes um, the whole movement very well hmm? uh, so thank you very much and I would like to invite you to explore these ideas and authors in order to have a clearer understanding of this movement.